Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokona Man at YouTube with a, another modeling video. Honing your airbrush skills. Going back to some of the beginners, a lot of people who learn how to airbrush have a couple of models under their belt and start encountering problems. A very common occurrence that I hear is as they're spraying primer or a base coat, the finish is uh, very gritty, very rough, almost looks like it's uh, sandpaper or orange peel um, after the uh, texture of an orange it's all pitted or holy or uh, whatever now there is multiple things that can um, occur to cause this to happen and I've seen a lot of uh, forums, threads, Facebook when someone says orange peels occurring what can they do and they'll be about half a dozen different comments of how to remedy it if it's relevant to the person asking or not. This video will demonstrate and show all the steps you can take to eliminate orange peel. So the first thing is most of the time it's mechanical. So we have paint going in the cup, air flowing through, it pretty much atomizes and hits the surface. We're controlling many elements of how thin the paint is, the PSI, any moisture in the air, as well as how, how far the model is. And what normally causes orange peel is as the paint is flying from the nozzle wet and lands on the model wet, if the model's too far away or the conditions are not ideal, the paint dries mid-air and lands on the model in solid chunks and uh, just sits on there very very rough opposed to landing wet fusing together to the surface as well as the rest of the liquid putty state surface and getting a very nice smooth even finish normally all you have to do is bring the surface closer to the airbrush where it's not too close and it's pulling and creating ripples of uh, paint or too much paint on the surface though sometimes there is many other factors that may be causing orange peel besides it just being far too hot or your airbrush far too away from the model normally most guides say that uh, you should be between one foot to twenty centimeters away from the surface I reckon once you paint enough you get an ideal what uh, gives you orange peel and what gives you a nice wet look generally I'm quite close to about 10 to 15 centimeters from a model now when we're looking at our airbrush the first thing I always look at is the crown and especially for your thicker paints your metallics and your um, acrylics and primer in the cap the uh, cap will actually uh, collect paint and will be uh, colored from the last amount of paint that you sprayed and that's not a big deal but sometimes the paint can collect in the cup of the crown and once the build up is too great you're pushing that dried paint and it's splattering all over the surface so in between colors you should very regularly inspect your uh, tip and clean it out with your Q-tip with a bit of thinner, making sure that the needle is retracted or it's uh, quite separated. Sometimes your uh, cap or end will flood and this would normally mean that when you reassembled your airbrush it's not tightened all the way across. Paint will gather in the back and then it will flood the front and then you're pushing still motionless paint with more paint and air and blasting it all over the model resulting in far too much dried paint on top of wet paint. The next thing to look out for with the uh, crown removed again is the condition of your needle and your nozzle. If your needle has the slightest bent at the very tip that tip um, bend is going to collect paint Now, when there's too much paint air is going to push it, it's going to be dry, it's going to land all over your work and that can also uh, cause orange peel. So with a knife or your fingernails just slide up and bend it back straight or break it off. If the tip of your needle becomes a bit too blunt get a bit of sandpaper 300-400 grit or higher and polish it by drawing it up like that 
and sanding your needle back to a tip and you can keep doing that until your tip is royally screwed so the tip can very very easily be um, repaired over time another thing that may cause your cap to flood is your nozzle and looking for damage on your nozzle can be a lot harder so being familiar on what your nozzle looks like when it's in good condition is ideal so the reason why we do talk about pulling apart and putting your airbrush back together sometimes if your airbrush is clogged you have a tendency of pushing your needle really hard to unclog it and you're able to spray again pushing your needle against the nozzle too hard can cause your nozzle to tear or flare out if your um, nozzle is damaged in the closed position if you're spraying any sort of misting or splattering of paint comes out your nozzle is absolutely stuffed if you do all the cleaning and maintenance and have your airbrush at ultimate um, capacity and operation and you're still getting splattering your nozzles definitely damaged get a magnifying glass and study it if you see a slight amount of uh, crack rip or flaring of the tip and it doesn't uh, gently hug the tip of your needle or your needle extrudes way too far out of your um, airbrush or your nozzle then um, your nozzles damaged and it's going to need to be replaced if your nozzle is not damaged then we might have water in the airline you need to check your water trap uh, fill your tank or have your airbrush running either undo the coupling at the bottom of your uh, water trap or uh, pull the nipple up and drain all the water out uh, water can cause a few issues in um, your line especially if you're airbrushing with solvents uh, solvents and water do not mix also consider buying a bullet that's a last line of defense that attaches to the end of your airbrush or directly to your uh, compressor after your existing main water trap you may say I already have a water trap but two water traps mean if one water trap fails the second one is guaranteed to collect and on your larger tank compressors where you've got the um, big uh, water trap uh, they're known to uh, fail on um, very humid days on very very hot days or when the tank um, starts to fill out with water and you haven't uh, drained it in quite a while if you're spraying and your paint is not too thin you're pretty much th um, spraying straight paint and your nozzles not clogging so it's leaving your airbrush and landing on the model your um, thinner is uh, or what little thinner is in that paint is evaporating too quickly drying midair than landing on the model even though thinner can make paint dry and harden faster once it's on the surface it remains um, in a liquid state when it's airborne apply more thinner to your paint if your nozzle seems to be operational and your crown is not full of paint another thing to be wary of is regular maintenance of your airbrush and we talk about this in honing your airbrush skills clean your airbrush between major projects once a month whatever if your airbrush is clogged your needle struggles to pull all the way back the back end isn't uh, lubricated or there's leaking in between seals because of uh, jammed paint that could be a problem and we're dealing with way too many problems to fault find and serve to go to why we're getting orange peel if your um, cap is not flooding and your needles not damaged give it a full clean and service and after a clean and service you do have a damaged nozzle that will come to light so that's a few ways to prevent orange peel as you're airbrushing if you've never uh, had orange peel before and you watch this video it's just a few quick checks to look at your airbrush after you've um, sprayed a coat or put down a color so you're not uh, ruining your work if you do have orange peel let's talk how to fix that if your surface is um, quite bumpy you applied your paint and it's got a bit of a texture to it 
the first thing you can do is quickly rinse out your airbrush, fill it up with thinner, and dust on a bit of uh, thinner onto the model. This will only work for lacquers and um, isopropic based uh, alcohol before it dries. So pretty much as immediate as humanly possible you uh, re-level uh, the paintwork. This does not work on polyurethane or enamel based paints but always guarantees to generally work on lacquers. If you apply too much thinner um, you can ruin the uh, paintwork. If you're too scared to do that allow your model to dry and fully harden uh, give it uh, 8 to 24 hours longer for enamel with 2, 4 and 6,000 grit sandpaper very lightly and with water you're able to buff away that uh, texture all the way down to a flatter smoother surface and apply a uh, clear coat or apply a clear coat on top of your orange peel allow it to fully dry and then uh, buff it or polish it back with two, four, six thousand grit sandpaper. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. If you have any friends or know of anyone that's suffering orange peel, you can uh, pass them on this video. The opposite to orange peel is if the paint pulls or you get something known as cat eye where there's a lot of tiny dots in your uh, paint or the uh, paint is separating off the model. That could be because you have a contaminant in the paint. Your surface that you're painting is not free of dirt or grease or your PSI is uh, far too high. That's very, very easy to fix as cat eye or fish eye is uh, most guaranteed not based off the performance or damage that has occurred to your airbrush and can be fixed purely by the surface of the model, the PSI or if the paint is contaminated with a grease or an oil. Where um, orange peel there is just so many factors. Generally if you are airbrushing the best temperatures to airbrush are generally um, anything under uh, 30 degrees I find between 20 to 25 are absolutely ideal indoors with a fan or the uh, air conditioning uh, running. If uh, there's any sort of announced humidity by the uh, news or the weather report, always, always avoid uh, hand painting or airbrushing as the environment is almost guaranteed to affect your work. Catch you guys later. Stay tuned until next time. Check out Facebook for further content. And if you have any questions about what we've talked about or other things, anything formed as a question in the comment section will always be addressed. Catch you guys next time.